Over the last decade, climate change has moved from scientific theory to reality. We produce so much greenhouse gases that our climate is changing, threatening our way of life. Cities account for 75% of total greenhouse gas emissions. More than half of that comes from buildings. As well as being part of the problem, buildings are a central part of the solutions for climate change. These solutions exist, and it's not too late to make a difference, but we have to act now. Geneva, Switzerland. The United Nations Economic Commission for Europe hold a conference on climate-neutral cities. More than simply reducing emissions, the UNECE hopes that climate-neutral cities will trigger environmental, social and economic benefits for communities and individuals. Buildings and land management lie at the heart of this approach. Bringing together key players, the conference provides member states with the tools and knowledge to cut greenhouse gases, share information and offer solutions in the fight against climate change. We have the private sector, we have NGOs, we have uh, intergovernmental organizations, uh, uh, we have architects, we have governments, all talking to each other to learn from each other. So our role is really to showcase different um, case studies and situations of cities and examples of buildings in the UNIC region and see how one can learn from the other. Vienna, Austria, an international model for a sustainable city. The UNECE hope the projects here will inspire the 56 countries that make up the UNECE region. At the cutting edge of solutions to lower emissions, Vienna is committed to reducing CO2 by 20% by 2020. All new building projects have to pass strict energy efficiency criteria. Public buildings are leading the way, like this kindergarten. It's a passive building, which means it has exceptionally low energy costs and requires no heating or cooling. Tell me about this building. For me, a solar building. It's solar architecture, a building which opens to this bright sun, this nice sun, and takes in sun when we have it. You have uh, integrated the energy infrastructure into the architecture of this building. Was this a challenge or a benefit? It's a big challenge but it's also a big advantage for architecture because out of this we can make a new, a, in my view, a better architecture. It will be architecture which is producing more energy than the building needs and it will be architecture which is uh, a little bit helping the environment instead of uh, destroying it. But it will take a long time before buildings built in the 21st century become the majority. Therefore, it's vitally important to invest in refurbishing existing buildings. By insulating walls and ceilings, replacing old windows and doors, and upgrading heating systems, buildings can be made much more energy efficient. It's a process known as retrofitting. Budapest, Hungary. This conference centre has a target of zero CO2 emissions, made possible by the use of computer-controlled systems and renewable sources of energy. But this isn't a new building. It's over 30 years old. This is really an amazing building. It's a very good example of how you can retrofit a building in a climate-neutral way, reducing emissions and improving the energy efficiency of the building. This is a building that has 140 solar panels on its roof. It produces more energy than often can use, so it's even producing energy for the rest of the city. But the biggest challenge lies in the residential sector. Houses are the main emitter of greenhouse gases in cities, and energy efficiency in housing offers the greatest opportunity to lower a city's carbon footprint. We know that in UNICE this is the main need. The housing stock is in desperate need of renovation. Dushanbe, Tajikistan. Throughout the region there are huge differences in energy production, climate and levels of economic development. The collapse of the Soviet Union left Tajikistan with poor energy resources. More than 60% of the population live below the poverty line. 
Historically, low energy prices meant little or no attention was paid to energy efficiency. Many of the buildings are now in a bad state of repair and use much more energy compared to housing in Western Europe. Tajikistan is experiencing the impact of climate change through uh, natural disasters, desertification, loss of biodiversity. The challenge ahead is huge because they have a housing stock that dates back to the Soviet times and since privatization hasn't been renewed, uh, the efficiency in terms of energy performance of these buildings is very low and there is a need of a program to renovate and make them more efficient. The country is taking part in a UNECE country profile, which helps governments to analyze their housing policies and identify priorities. The practical way we go about it. While experts share information and technical know how. At UNEC, we are optimistic for the future because we have the opportunity to see what can be done and what has been done um, in many cities in the region. Sofia. Bulgaria. Like many cities in Eastern Europe, it's surrounded by sprawling prefabricated housing estates built during the socialist period. More than 60% of the population live in buildings like this. Nikolai Stoichev lives with his family on the 10th floor in one of the prefabricated blocks. The temperature inside the building used to be as low as the temperature in the street. Every other year we were repairing the block and the roof and we just couldn't afford to carry out the constant repairs to keep warm. With soaring energy prices and no coordinated support for upgrading, the UNECE is working alongside local partners to improve the energy efficiency of such buildings. Each family in Nikolai's block paid 4,000 US dollars for the renovations. But with energy bills cut by as much as 50%, the money can be recouped in less than two years. Now that the work on the block has finished, you can really feel the effect of the insulation. It's like we're living in a new building. For the rest of the UNICE region, it's very important to learn from these experiences, to understand why these are, they have been undertaken and how. What is very important is to make sure that many examples are shown and not one solution presented as the solution that fits all. The UNECE believe retrofitting projects can and should be rolled out across the region. But this will depend on the establishment of proper institutional frameworks. The efforts of governments are crucial in this respect. Climate neutral cities is something that can happen if all the stakeholders working in a city, from urban planner to architects to politicians to citizens themselves, work together towards climate neutrality. It's hoped that the goal of climate neutral cities will not only help in the fight against climate change, but the energy, carbon emissions and money saved will enable a healthier, more socially just and sustainable future for the millions of families living in the region.